recommendations seem to be in our favour. Um, that doesn't surprise me on the basis of the evidence that he was given. Um, however, what I'm looking towards now is to see some sort of urgent response from government before any more people die. I mean, there, is a, there, has been, there have been some anomalies, haven't there, with this compensation scheme where not all the families uh, ha have had the money that they perhaps expected to get. Um, that's right. First of all, can I just point out, we've never ever had any compensation at all. We've only ever had a series of ex gratia payments um, because you can't have compensation unless someone admits liability and that's never been done. Um, however, yes, there have been a lot of anomalies. Um, the amounts themsel in themselves have been completely derogatory, especially if you look at the amounts that some of the younger men had, um, mainly, I believe, because they weren't expected to live very long anyway, and some of them have obviously outlived all expectations. As far as the widows go, go um, there, there has been a complete... A completely shambolic payment scheme um, whereby a line was basically drawn in the sand. The government themselves have admitted it was completely arbitrary um, and it's ended up with some widows being given compensation whereas others whose husbands, and I quote someone saying this one day, whose husbands died at the wrong time, didn't get a penny. Now, Lord Archer also m mentions in this report a sense of betrayal and also anger amongst families. Do you think that this will help people now to move forward? Do you, do you think it will help in some way? Um, I don't think words are going to help as much as action. I think what we need now, as I said, is to see some very swift action from the government. It will obviously help to know that he sympathises and that he has brought a lot of what happened out into the open. All we've ever wanted is the truth and some justice. He's given us the truth. Now we're looking towards the government for justice. He also criticised the government for the, at the time for the slowness of realising that actually these blood, blood products ran a high risk of can, contamination. Is that something that you would welcome? Um, I certainly welcome that coming out, yes. Um, we've never completely attained self-sufficiency in this country. We are still not self-sufficient in blood and blood products. When you say self-sufficiency, you mean not uh, importing blood from other countries and just using our own blood here? Absolutely, yes, and also ensuring that the blood supply in this country is as safe as it can possibly be because this doesn't just affect the haemophilia community. It potentially affects every man, woman and child in, in, in the country today. Because the report does say that actually it was known to be much safer to have blood that just came from the country rather than importing it from abroad. Um, and also the fact that the American blood, there was criticism about the, the suppliers of the American blood, that they, that they sh should have known or should have been more aware that this was a, of a high risk. I mean, that must be quite pleasing for you to have that down in writing now. It is because we knew as early as the mid-80s, early to mid-80s, that we were importing blood products from America where it had been sourced from paid donors. Um, and that's a source of blood that is known to be highly risky. Um, they were using prison donors, skid row donors, people who just walked into centres and sold their blood. Um, so by very merits of the fact that it was coming from those places, it was unsafe. Yes, they, he said today that commercial interest seems to have taken precedence uh, over public health concerns. That's quite strong, isn't it? It may be quite strong, but it's absolutely true, yeah.